to thy spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to thee, O Lord, glory to thee. Verse 10, at that time James, uh, Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. For the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets and getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's. Jesus answered him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, I'll put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they closed a great shoal of fish. And as their nets were breaking, they beckoned with their partners on the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And he was astonished, and all who were with, that were with him at the catch of fish they had taken, and so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. Henceforth you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. Glory to the other, glory to thee. Please be seated. <coughs> The calling of the four, um, Andrew, Peter, James, and John, is, uh, is actually uh, described in all three synoptic gospels, uh, Matthew and Mark and Luke. In Matthew and Mark, it seems like Jesus has walked up and said, come follow me, I will make you fishers of men. But Luke tells us the entirety of the story, which is very important. Uh, Jesus had uh, begun to accumulate uh, a public awareness of himself through the miracles and other things. And so uh, when he was uh, in Capernaum uh, by the Sea of Galilee, which is also called uh, uh, Lake Genesaret, that's about 13 miles long, and it's uh, called a sea because it, it tends to have turbulent winds. Uh, but at any rate, uh, the crowd was so big, they were literally pushing Jesus into the water. And so he called Peter over and asked him to take him out in the boat. And obviously Andrew was with him. And uh, so that he could uh, at least have enough distance to be able to preach to the people. And when it was done, and we don't know how long it took, whether it was brief or long, they tend, Jesus uh, teaching the crowds tended to be very long. But at any rate, he turned to Peter and said, Go there, go out to the deep, and throw your nets over and I'll catch. And Peter essentially said, You know, I'll do what you say because of who you are. But you know, I, I, I'm the expert. I fished all night and I know there's no fish here. It's a waste of time. But he did it anyway. And of course what happened is the nets were full. And this was one of those uh, theophany, epiphany moments when the presence of God was so powerful. And as the nets were breaking and they called James and John to help bring in the catch, Peter falls down literally on his face in prostration. It says, leave me, I'm a sinful man. Uh, he experienced one of those powerful moments of the presence of God. Uh, it happened to Paul on the road to Damascus when he was struck down blind and he heard a voice of Jesus saying, why are you persecuting me? It happened to the prophet Isaiah because in his, we don't know the details of his theophany, but we know that he cried out, you know, leave me, I'm a man of unclean lips among a people of unclean lips. Now, what's happened over time is we like to avoid those things. Because when we have that powerful experience of God, it is fearsome, it is awesome. And what it does is it literally throws us off the security of our life. 
and demands that we go in another direction. And so we do everything we can to organize our practice of Christianity so that it's so organized that God won't mess with us. That He won't come and encounter us the way He did Peter that day and Andrew and James and John. The way He encountered Paul on the road to Damascus. The way He encountered Isaiah. And so we set up Christianity as a set of rules and principles. We just follow everything. We'll be fine. We literally create a box. We create walls so that we avoid the disturbing presence of the living God. And when we do that, we defeat God's intention to save us. God's intention to transform our lives. Because those uh, pregnant encounters that are so powerful that we have to fall down before God in awe. And that's what the word fear literally means when it talks about the presence of God. It's not that we're afraid of God. It's that the power of God is so strong that it's all that we experience before Him. But those experiences, when we take down our walls, transform our lives, and send us in a new direction. And so this lesson today is not only about the calling of Peter and Andrew and James and John, but it's a message to us about taking down the walls that we organize in terms of how we practice the faith to allow God to encounter us in a powerful theophany like this. And so today, I, get to, I ask you to think about what your walls are and to take them down. In the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, both now and ever and to ages of